In Ecuador, former Vice President Jorge Glass was released after spending five years in prison. And the presidents of Russia and Kazakhstan signed a joint statement on the occasion of the 30th anniversary of the establishment of bilateral diplomatic relations. And Hawaii's Mauna Loa volcano, the world's largest, began erupting after nearly 40 years. Hello, welcome to Telesur English. I am Estefania Bravo from the headquarters of Quito in Ecuador. This is from the South. In Ecuador, former Vice President Jorge Glass was released after spending five years in prison after a judge issued a release order. Glass was in prison after being charged for alleged irregularities in oil extraction contracts, along with six other implicated parties. The former vice president had already been denied two habeas corpus, one of which allowed him to leave prison for several days this year before being annulled following political and media pressure. The magistrate is in charge of issuing the release order, detailed that Glass will have to present himself once a week in Guayaquil, and he cannot leave the country. After leaving the prison, the, vice, uh, the former vice president did not offer any statements, but greeted the supporters who were waiting for him outside. Bolivia's Legislative Assembly announced on Monday that it will receive the bill to implement the results of a population and housing census in the financial and electoral areas. According to the uh, presidency of the Chamber of Senators, the law was approved by more than two-thirds of the votes of the deputies and therefore an ordinary session will be called to refer the law of the Constitution Commission. In this respect, the president of the Constitution Committee of the Chamber of Deputies, Juan José Jaregui, stated that the procedure in the Senate will be expedited as it will only have to consider a single bill. The Peruvian judiciary called for the creation of mechanisms to overcome the current political crisis in the country. In this regard, the president of the entity, Elvira Barrios, affirmed that it is necessary to build bridges between the state institutions in view of the serious political crisis the country experiences. At the same time, Barrios assured that the belligerent environment promoted by Congress against Pedro Castillo's government generates a serious risk to democratic institutionality. In Chile, two transport unions decided to continue with the strike that began a week ago for more security and lower fuel prices, despite the agreement reached with the government to end the conflict. According to the Interior Ministry, there are 36 areas with trucks on the side of the road and one with a partial road blockade. Truckers' unions of the South and North agreed to continue demobilizations after rejecting an agreement signed by the government with the National Confederation of Cargo Transport and the Federation of Truck Owners of Valparaiso Region. In Argentina, the reopening of the export increase, a program that benefits the agricultural sector, is effective as of this Monday. The program, which establishes a different exchange rate for the soybean production complex of $230 per unit, will be enforced until December 31st and contemplate an update in the dollar exchange rate based on the evolution of the inflation, taking as a reference the $200 that prevailed in the first version implemented last September. The measure was announced on Friday, November 25th, during a meeting with executives of the agro-industrial sector by the Minister of Economy, Sergio Massa, who stated that the program will allow for strengthening the reserves and generate a higher level of activity in the agricultural and agro-industrial sector. And in Cuba, over 5 million citizens went to polls to elect delegates to People's Power Municipal Assemblies, the main state body at the local level. Of the 8,351,311 registered voters, 5,300,591 people went to the polls on Sunday. That is 63.85%. These are the first elections by the new electoral law under the new 29 constitution. To be elected, a candidate must get 50% plus one of the total votes. Chosen 
candidates will exercise their mandate in a non-professional manner for five years as stipulated in the new constitution. On Monday, more than 1 million students in Cuba started the new school year, including students in the province of Pinar del Rio, which was recently devastated by Hurricane Ian. Cuban Education Minister Ena Elsa Velasquez made the announcement at a press conference. She said the new school year will be shorter for it will end in June 2023. She also said that local authorities of the education portfolio in Pinar del Rio province are counting on the support of companies and organizations that will provide facilities to be used as classrooms and that they are working on the rest and the restitution of school furniture lost or damaged by Hurricane Ian. We're taking our first break now. Join us again after this, but also don't forget to follow us on our TikTok account at Telesur English for more. Stay with us. Welcome back to From the South, more news now. The presidents of Russia and Kazakhstan signed a joint statement on Monday on the occasion of the 30th anniversary of the establishment of bilateral diplomatic relations. During the ceremony, the Russian president expressed his satisfaction with the successful development of relations between Moscow and Atsana. The Russian head of state also welcomed the recent re-election of Tokayev as the head of Kazakh state, stressing the closeness and the goodwill of his administration. For his part, the Kazakh leader highlighted the political significance and symbolism of his first official visit to the Eurasian nation after his re-election, while thanking the Russian leader for his support and his closeness. The lifting of all restrictions and the creation of mutually beneficial conditions for trade are clearly key to the quality economic growth of our countries. This is why our meeting today has a special character. In Moldova, activists protested against the national government in the streets of Chisiano. According to local media, protesters demanded the resignation of President Maya Sandu and the holding of early elections due to the energy policies that the head of state has implemented during her administration. Also, Moldovan citizens pointed out that the country suffers a sharp increase in the cost of public services. In Europe, an international police operation has dismantled a drug trafficking cartel with links in Malaga, Panama, and the United Arab Emirates. Police seized over 500,000 euros in cash, some 30,000 kilos of cocaine heading for the European market, and arrested 49 suspects, among which seven high-profile ones. Authorities have been investigating the case since 2020 after the seizure of the container loaded with 698 kilos of drugs in a port in the city of Valencia. The figure that has been seized uh, last year, 240 tons of cocaine. We think more will be shipped, is shipped to the EU. So 30 tons is a lot, but on the global scale, it's not that massive. Um, but it will have an impact on cocaine coming in, because it's not the, only the number of cocaine that has been seized, it's that the super cartel behind, different networks working together, to create a huge super cartel of uh, cocaine trafficking that this cartel has been dismantled. So strategically, in the long term, it will have a big impact. In France, the European Organization for Nuclear Research had to shut down the world's largest particle accelerator due to the energy crisis facing Europe. The organization said it had to shut down the device two weeks before the scheduled in the face of possible power cuts in the coming months, and they announced that during 2023, they will reduce the operation of the accelerator complex by 20%.
On Sunday night, the U.S. Geological Service reported that Hawaii's Mauna Loa, the world's largest active volcano, has started to erupt. They said that for the time being, lava flows are contained within the summit area and do not pose a threat to downslope communities. However, they warned that based on previous events, early eruption stages of this volcano can be very dynamic and that the location and advance of lava flows can change rapidly. After the activity report, the volcano alerted level has been upgraded from an advisory to a warning. The Hawaiian Volcano Observatory said it would conduct aerial reconnaissance as soon as possible to better assess potential hazards. Over a dozen earthquakes of more than 2.5 magnitude have struck the region in the last few hours, with one measuring 4.2 in magnitude. The Mauna Loa volcano has erupted in, uh, last erupted in April 1984. And moving on to Italy, on Monday, search parties recovered the body of an, of an eighth victim of a landslide on the small Italian island of Ichia, as a former mayor said his calls for an evacuation had been ignored. A wave of earth and debris crashed through the small town of Casamicola Terme amid heavy rains on Saturday, destroying houses and sweeping cars down the sea. The latest body to be recovered was of a 15-year-old boy killed among with his younger brother and sister. And moving on to El Salvador, where, a volcano, where authorities warned that residents of the near the Chapasratic volcano in the country's east to be in alert after it began to erupt. The Environmental Ministry's observatory reported explosions in the central crater of the volcano, located about 135 kilometers east of the nation's capital. The ministry said the eruption's intensity was uh, one on a scale from uh, zero to eight. The eruption began on Sunday when the volcano launch rocks and ash to areas surrounding the crater. Authorities prepared 26 shelters that could accommodate more than 10,000 people and installed command posts to provide the most current information of the volcano's activity. The volcano, also known as San Miguel, has a height of 2,000 meters and is among the six most active volcanoes in El Salvador. The last major eruption was in January 2016 when it swept large amounts of ash and gases for more than 13 continuous hours. We're taking our last break now. Join us again after this, but also don't forget to follow me on my Twitter account at Ibrao Telesur for more. Stay with us. Welcome back to From the South, more news. Now, on Monday, the World Health Organization announced that monkeypox will be called M-pox in all languages. The WHO noted that when the disease outbreak began in May of 2022, racist and stigmatizing statements were observed, prompting some countries and individuals to call for a name change. Both names will be used for one year before the term monkeypox is completely replaced. The disease was so named because it was originally identified in research monkeys in Denmark in 1958, but occurs more than commonly in rodents. It was first reported in humans in 1970 in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And in Nairobi, the East African community held the third meeting of consultations for the peace process in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It is the third in a series of peace talks on the eastern region of the DRC, which was witnessed fierce fighting between Congolese troops and the M23 rebel group. Kenya's president, William Ruru, and Burundi's Evariste Nishidimi attended two on Monday opening session in person while the residents of Congo, Rwanda, and Uganda attended virtually. And on Monday, Somali forces stormed a hotel in the capital, Mogadishu, where extremists had been holed up for more than 18 hours after killing eight civilians and trapping dozens in the building. Al-Shabaab terrorist group said in a, t a broadcast on its own radio frequency on Sunday that its fighters attacked the hotel, which has a restaurant popular with government and security officials. The hotel is not from the, um, the presidential palace via Somalia in one of the most protected parts of central Mogadishu. 
In the name of God, the most gracious and the most merciful, the siege of the Villa Rosa Hotel have been concluded as of the 28th of November. Five of the six fighters who attacked the hotel were killed, and one of them committed suicide. In the course of their attack on the hotel, the militant attackers have killed eight civilians who were staying in the hotel at the time the attack took place. As a result of the attack, 60 people have been evacuated by the security forces and no civilians have been injured. The attack resulted in the death of one soldier who was protecting the people and the wounding of five other security members. Ghana is experiencing a deep economic crisis with a rampant inflation that has reached almost 40% of its currency and has fallen by almost half compared to the U.S. dollar. Ghana, among with many African economies, was still recovering from the pandemic when it was hit by the global increase in food and energy prices caused mainly by Western sanctions against Russia following the conflict in Ukraine. But the country also had to deal with the fall of the CD, its currency that has been one of the world's worst performing economies against the dollar with a year. With 31 million people, Ghana is now one of the country's hardest hit by the crisis in the region, and that is very noticeable for those who rely on imports and the dollars to get their goods. hard-fought match took place between the White Eagles and the inimitable Lions with a winner on the road of the round of 16. On Monday, the Cameroonian national team drew 3-3 against the Serbs at the Al Yanub Stadium after a 3-1 disadvantage, but they were able to recover gradually with a series of moves that ended up equalizing the match dominated by the Europeans. As for the goals, Pavel Lik, Milinkovic, Savic and Mitrovic scored for the Serbian side and on the African side as the stars were Abubakar, Shupomoting and Castellet. And Ghana continues to put up a fight in Qatar 2022 and proved it against South Korea in a match that ignited football excitement as the Africans looked to continue their presence in the World Cup with a 3-2 victory. A Jask midfielder Mohamed Kudus was the main protagonist of the match as he changed the outcome of the game with a brace that stopped the South Korean advance, which was ahead of the Black Stars on the scoreboard. Thus, the Ghanaian team remains second in Group H and keeps on fighting to reach the round of 16. In the third match of the day, Brazil defeated Switzerland 1-0 with a goal by Casimiro to advance to the round of 16. Thus, the five-time world champion joins France and Portugal as the only team so far to have already made it to the next round. The goal came after a great connection between three players who were together at Real Madrid. Vinicius Jr. passed to Rodrigo and the latter passed to Casimiro with a touch. And the current Manchester United player put the ball far from Yang Somer's reach. And Portugal booked their place in the World Cup last 16 on Monday as Bruno Fernandes' second half doubled secured a 2-0 win over Uruguay. The deadlock was broken in the 54th minute when Fernandes' cross was missed by Cristiano Ronaldo and flew straight into the net. The Manchester United midfielder added a second injury time from the penalty spot as Portugal moved uh, to the top of the Group H with six points. And as just the hearts of millions of fans live the emotions of the Qatar 2022 World Cup, Telesur joins this sporting event with From the Field, a show that brings news, analysis, reviews, and more to our audience. Don't miss it. Our show airs at 1 p.m. local time in Caracas and 12 p.m. New York. Remember, From the Field, only on Telesur. And with that story, we've come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net.
And also be sure to follow us on our socials. We're on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram as well. For Telesur English, I am Estefania Bravo. Until next time.